So these are topics for today, basically. So what are HDFS blocks? So again, this we covered this yesterday also, but today we are going to discuss in detail. So whenever a file comes up, a file is always make up, made up of blocks. When you talk of a Unix file system, the block size is really small. But when it comes to Hadoop, the file system would be a big file and the file would be uh, split into multiple blocks based on the block size of the cluster. So if you define your block size as 64 MB, then any file that comes to a data node, all these blocks will be 64 MB blocks. So if this file was say um, 128 MB file or 256 MB file, so that means it will have uh, four blocks. So this file will be split into four blocks and based on replication, there will be four times three blocks. So there will be 12 basically blocks for a four like block file based on the replication factor. If replication factor is one, you will just have four blocks. If replication factor is three, you will have three different as you yes, as you can see, there's a blue colored blocks, there are orange colored blocks and there are green colors blocks. So these basically signify the replication and these blocks then end up on data nodes based on where name node tries decides to put the blocks and the name node basically is now managing the complete file system as we discussed so there's a file system image which is made up of the blocks in the system all the data nodes basically tell their blocks whenever a data node comes up it will tell its blocks to name node that i have these these these, these blocks so all the blocks for example in data node one you can see this blue red green colored blocks so these are the blocks that are on data node one similar data node two has blocks so whenever data node comes up it will tell that i have these five blocks so name node will basically make a note that these these these, these blocks are on this data node and then it will have file system image where it will basically know the file and it will have the blocks and from data nodes it will get the block report so now it will know that which blocks are on which data node and then that basically that file system image plus this in-memory metadata from data nodes which tells the block mapping to the data node comprise tells the name node clearly that where actually a file would be and and then we have something called edit logs so whenever some change is done on the file system a file gets removed a file gets created then we have edit logs like you have bin logs for example in mysql so so based on that we have these transactional logs which are called edit logs so so basically if you want to have the complete file system image at any point of time what you'll have to do is you have to look at the initial fs image which is which is the file system image that when name node came up and then after that changes all the changes that happen to the file system they go under edit log so if you basically combine file system image and all the edit logs that ha that are present in the name node metadata directory if you are combine them together those together combined will tell you the file system state at at the point of time which is now so basically that's how the file system image is built so again we are going to discuss this in detail but this is basically just telling you that what are basically hdfs blocks where they are stored and how name node knows where the blocks are stored so sanjay has a question when a data node goes down then the block info is removed from the fs image so fs image basically is the image that came up yes yeah, so so as I said, there's in-memory file system metadata. So where whatever blocks are there on a data node, they are in name node's memory as a bitmap. So if a data node goes down, the name node will not receive any heartbeat. And then it will basically update those cop those those blocks uh, for the data node as stale. And it will basically try to based on your replication factor. For example, it was three and then say one data node went down. So all these blocks, the first blue block, for example, what is now replicated on two nodes only this and this, the name node will start replicating this block to another node. And once it copies that block to another data node, then it will update that information in his bitmap that now the new data node, third data node for this block is the new node where it just replicated it. So name node basically takes care of re-replication of the blocks in case a data node goes down. So hopefully that answers your question, Sanjay. And Sai is saying, is the default to 64 MB each blocks? So yes, so default by default, if you don't specify block size on Hadoop, by default, it is 64 MB on all the blocks on the system. So basically all data nodes will store 64 MB blocks. So Fani is saying, can you come again? What exactly FS image contains and edit log contains? What is the default file size of FS image and edit log when we set up the name node? 
yeah, so default file system size would be like very tiny because initially you don't have any anything on your file system image. So again, once I show the demo today, you will see that initially file system image would be like few bytes because there would be nothing in file system image. So as and when you start adding nodes, the file system image will be built up and then and then we discussed yesterday that secondary name node does some checkpointing. So when I said that at any point of time, if you want to see the state of your file system image, you basically combine initial file system image with the edit logs. So this combination, this merging of file system image with edit logs is done by secondary name node. So again, in our further sessions, we'll see how secondary name node does it. So basically, that's why I said that FS image is like constantly, if your secondary name node is running, it will constantly update that file system image by merging the edit logs at a point of time. And then those file system image will actually, if your secondary name node is running, your file system image size will keep on changing every hour because what secondary name node will do is it will take the original file system image, take all the edit logs that happen in one hour, one hour, merge them together and send the new file system image to name node and the name node will start using that file system image and all the edit logs that happen after are written in the new edit log so every hour secondary name node does this thing it will merges file system image with the edit logs and give it back to the name node so that's why at any point of time if you want to see real file system state you have to use the file system image present on the name node plus the edit logs because edit logs have all the deletes, the new uh, MKDIRs, all the new uh, directory creations, also all kind of transactions, they go in edit logs. So hopefully that answers your question, Fanny. And so Fanny saying, so it's like the data file and log file in SQL Server. Yeah, so it's like bin logs, right? So you have the transactional logs. So it's, it's like that. So basically FS image is like file system image that initially comes up. So Sanjay is saying, when is edit log sync with FS image? So Sanjay, as I just explained this to Fanny, so I hopefully that answers your question that every hour, secondary name node is going to take file system image and take edit logs at a particular point of time or a transaction ID. And it marks that transaction ID that I have taken edit log still this transaction ID. So it, edit log basically has a transaction ID. So so secondary name node will combine file system image and edit logs and send it back to name node and the name node will use this new file system image and and then all the edit logs starting from the transaction id till that the point where secondary name node has basically merged so next time secondary name node will start looking at the edit logs from that new transaction id that it saved at last hour so that's how this merging happens and again we are going to cover it detail when we discuss secondary name node and then we'll look at the HDFS architecture. We also briefly discussed this yesterday. So we are saying that client is the machine from where you basically you are running Hadoop commands, file system commands to name node. So all the metadata operations to read data, write data happen from client and client contacts name node. Name node is storing the metadata, which means all the files and knows how, what is the replication of each file and what are the blocks made up made up of each uh, for each file and knows which data nodes have those blocks and data nodes are basically storing the blocks and replication happens across the data nodes based on the replication factor you have defined and then you have multiple racks so you might have one rack having few data nodes second rack having few data nodes so again rack awareness is something we are going to discuss in today's class so for your questions uh, rack awareness i'm going to discuss again and then so whenever client needs to read basically it goes to name node and it basically gets the location of data nodes and read the nodes the blocks from data nodes directly without talking to the name node similarly when a client has to write it basically talks to name node gets the location and starts writing the blocks to the data nodes directly without contacting the name node so name node just tells them this is, a, this is the nodes where you should write the data. This is the nodes you should read from the data and then name nodes part is over because otherwise name node will be a bottleneck for everything, if everything goes to name node. So that's why name node just tells the location of blocks and then clients, they talk directly to the data nodes to read or write the data. Okay, so Mohammed is saying, can we change time of syncing? Yes, so by default it is one hour, but you can definitely change it, yes. So Hadoop, is very configurable in terms of allowing you to change the parameters. So this is how basically SGFS blocks look like. So I explained the 
FS image. I said, I, and then I explained about edit logs and then I explained about a bitmap, right? So what I said was name node has a list of files and name node has list of blocks per file and name node has list of data nodes per block. So that's the bitmap that stays in memory. So the list of files is basically file system image and the list of blocks per file is also in file system image. Edit logs are the real edits happening to the file system, which means deletion of a directory, addition of a directory. So those are edit logs. And other than that, what are the number of list of data nodes per block? So every block based on replication factor will have certain number of certain data nodes where the data would be written, right? So one block has three data nodes because that block based on replication factor, there'll be three data nodes that will basically having the copy of that block. So this is basically the memory part of metadata that stays in name node memory that what is the list of data nodes per block. So that's basically comprising the name node metadata. So money is saying when name node is recovering from a data node crash, will there be any impact to the availability? No, because because we have a replication factor, right? So even if once a data node went down, name node will still have in memory that this block has these two data nodes where it is available. So whenever a request comes to read that block, name node will not use the data node that has gone down because it has already updated its bitmap and it will just go to the next available data node and that data node will have the block and client will read directly from that block, from that data node. So if a data node is down, it does not impact clusters availability and people can still read and write the files. So that's basically the main beauty of Hadoop that even if your few nodes are down, your cluster should still be able to operate and people should still be able to read and write the data without wa waiting for that node to come up. So Sanjay is saying, how does name node decide which data to pick pick from three replicated nodes? So basically name node will just basically uh, has that algorithm that it will write that this block has these three data nodes. So if you have no rack awareness, it could be in any order. So when we have rack awareness, then name node decides in a particular order that we'll discuss in, in the coming few slides. So Sanjay, that would answer your question that how name node will decide which data node to pick to write and to tell the client. So while has a question, if a task tracker is running on a data node that went down, what happens to the task tracker? So basically if, so if, if we say that data node process went down, that means just the JVM for data node went down. That means the, the host where data node and task tracker were running, then that host is still up and data node went down for some reason, then the task tracker would not be impacted, right? Because data node is a separate Java process and task tracker is a different JVM. So if data node went down, it doesn't impact task tracker. But if say your host went out of memory, in that case, the host is just not up. So in that case, both data node as well as task tracker, both of them would be down. So hopefully that answers your question well. So the thing, what is, what process is writing the data block? So I guess Sumiti, in our next slide, we'll answer that question. Yeah. 